yeah it's just recording audio so like that's part of the that's part of the thing too is like people are just going to hear our smooth and sexy voices but your voice is so much more smooth and sexy than you so first thing i wanted to ask you about or talk to you about is your book that you gave me okay the summer is ended and we are not yet saved by joey Camus. did you start it I did start it. I haven't finished it yet. I'm about three fifths of the way through, I'd say. Ah! And I fucking hate this book. Oh. I hate this book. It's oh. so, it's good. It's it's written well. And I think that's the problem because he, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't really like horror movies and I don't mind like, like a good murder, but he's very descriptive about killing all the children (laughs) and i just don't want to hear about bones breaking and ribs cracking and like there's a part where like the sternum is pushed in and i'm just like ah like no 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 it's real man it's real stuff but not not it is not real hopefully it's not real well i'm sure there is some counselor camp counselor who went nuts and murdered a bunch of children i'm sure it's literally happened just statistically but uh i don't know i think i I stopped right here at page 146 as as it describes jackie waking up in the basement with her teeth like her her lower jaw like half falling off and some teeth missing and roots and i'm i just couldn't i'm like not teeth not teeth not teeth that's that's the worst of it though that's just another part of it and i'm oh god i can't i just why did you like the book What, what was your opinion of it I thought it was kind of beautiful, actually, but not not the teeth going in. Part. I mean, even that was kind of it, he. He's a very beautiful writer. He's very descriptive. So you like the realism? You like the? It felt like a a thing that could happen, or just like the? It's it's more whimsical, I think, actually. Yeah, I would say so. A little bit whimsical in his writing, so it sounds more artistic than real life. It almost reads like a satire. I yeah. would say. Yeah. It's kind of funny, I would say. Yeah, it has a, a dark humor to it. And I love dark humor, but my God, those descri- I just want the edited version for like middle schoolers, you know, um, okay. that's that's that I think would make me a lot more comfortable. I just want to skip all the, I want to redact all the parts where where teeth go missing and, and where he like murders the children. I didn't know you were a sensitive soul. I am. I think I'm very objective. Dying kids are dying kids, but I don't want to I don't want to read about the specifics, I guess. Okay. So, I don't know. But I'm going to finish it, and I'm going to finish it for you. And I, I've liked parts of it. I love his mother. His mother's ridiculous. I She'd be a terrible mother, but I like the personality and the way she writes. So that's kind of nifty because she writes a lot like – she's very poetic and dark, and she gives like a, a, a weird – Um, it's a lot – she writes a lot like Welcome to Night Vale where it's like normal things in the city that aren't – Actually happening. Right, right. Or maybe they are, but I mean, in this book, obviously they're not, but, but, but it's, yeah, it's the, the implication. Yeah. So I like her. I like, I like the way she writes. I like her notes and things like that. I, I don't know. I like Martin. I obviously want Martin to survive or whatever. I think that's his name. Um, but, uh, what do you think? Predictions? Is he going to make it? I think if he dies, the whole goddamn thing is pointless. I think the main character's got to survive. Uh, I want to say let's have his 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 love affair survive too, but it's part of me is like, well, they're fourteen though, like f- it, they're not gonna make it. Like, like in terms of love stuff, like it's it's just it has so less so much less weight because as they're a kid, get married, like exactly, exactly. Whatever she can she can bite the bullet. Yeah, yeah, and it's like, well, maybe maybe. Maybe they can consummate their affections first, but they're 14. So that's just weird. Like, I keep forgetting how old they are. So it's like, it doesn't, re- because of the age of the characters, it doesn't, certain tropes that you you expect to work out the way that normally do won't or would be weird to have that happen. 10 minutes in heaven, man. Camp games, maybe. That's true. That's true. Like an awkward kind of lubeless hand job. Um, I gave you that book, uh, what, a year ago now? Probably at least a year ago, was, yeah. Was Jackie the main love interest? I can't remember. 
No, it's not Jackie. Jackie's, I think, uh, Jackie's the one. I don't know if she's um, a counselor or not. I don't remember. I, oh, I'm having a hard time. <laughs> Sherry Lynn was a counselor, I think. But yeah, no, the main yeah. love interest is. Um, it's like the kind of shy girl, I think. Yeah, it was the quiet, like we weirdish one, which I guess makes sense. But it doesn't even make sense why she she initiates anything anyway. It just it doesn't. I don't. I don't get a read on her friends. They're kind of neat, but they're, there's just they didn't really. I think the guy just wanted to write a book about this guy. You know, this this priest who murders a bunch of kids, and he just added other shit because he felt like it was necessary. Um, Melissa, was that it? Yeah. No. no, was that her? Mar Joan, Joan. Her name is Joan. Yeah, Melissa Joan. was uh, Joan's friend. So, I don't know. We'll see. Shrug. I think I think he'll survive, though. But I don't care if he doesn't. You don't care? I mean, I don't know. I think it, it's more about the priest. It is more about the priest, I think. But I have a, I have a, a friend named Tony who has already described to me his murder plan at work. He's got two. So it's hard not to, you know, imagine him as the priest a little bit. And so that's kind of entertaining. Real life scenarios. Yeah. Real life Father Tony. Just kind of unsettling. I, I don't know. Tell everybody where you're at. Um, I'm now in Tokyo, Japan. And I, it's my fourth day here. Maybe going on the fifth day here. Um... Let's talk about hand soap, actually. There's okay. no hand soap in the public bathrooms here. Do you just wash your hands with water? Yeah. In Japan? That seems yeah. odd for Japan. Yeah. It, it, apparently, um, I was asking somebody, they think that maybe the reason is that it's like an environmental thing. Um, like in a lot of countries, <clears> it's banned to have hand soap in public bathrooms because it's, or antibacterial soap is so bad. There's only, hmm. like, bar soap sometimes, and my Korean school actually had that as well. Antibacterial hand soap, that makes sense, but it's surprising that they have no hand soap at all. None at all, just water. It's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it makes you very uncomfortable. That's very that's very unusual, because I know, I know Japan is, is pretty health conscious. I know they have that whole thing where, um, or if they're sick, that they will wear a face mask in public. Is that right? Uh, yes. I don't know how Japan is about that exactly. I was actually in Korea before this, and in Korea, you're supposed to wear the face masks if you get sick, but I've, I've seen it a lot um, with the Korean people. They'll, they'll wear them in public, and then when you get to close quarters, like one-on-one, -on -one, then they take them off to talk to somebody, which... Sounds like that defeats the purpose. Yeah, it defeats the purpose. So everybody gets sick anyways. I don't know how Japan is. Maybe Maybe they're better about it. I'm not sure. I've heard it talked about in other places. So, you know, obviously you've been there. You could tell me, but I don't, I don't know. So, and you're, when are you starting work? Have you already started yet or? So I got there in the afternoon, maybe four to 5 p.m. And then I started working the next morning. So I've been working, um, I had three days and then today was my first day off. I'm working at a private school. So like a small academy. It's really great, actually. It's. Heck yeah such a nice place to work i actually feel like i'm getting real training well, that's awesome and so and so just so that the viewers know what we're talking about because this is i'm i'm trying to remember oh yeah there's a third party in the room everyone who will be listening to this eventually when it goes online but what so t tell the tell the just so that they have an idea of what you're doing tell them kind of i guess how you got into this or what 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 your job is uh i'm an english teacher english is a second language um, I decided that I was going to move to Korea and teach English, so I did that for one year, just as an ALT, which is, sort of has a bad reputation in the community, because you usually teach with a co-teacher, which, you know, like like some some schools even are like, oh, we don't really want you here, we could teach without you, totally. Mine was, mine was good. I taught in Busan for one year. Then after that, I got a job in Tokyo, and now I'm teaching at a private school. I'm working with kids from age one up until, I think, junior high is my highest class right now. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. 
So just for people who are unfamiliar with the program too, this is a program that takes people from another country and pays them to teach English with without an accent, essentially. Yes, yes. Without an accent. And then a lot of the time, things are very lost in translation. Like the, the languages over here, I guess, are so different. They're not romantic at all. So a lot of the time, even the people who have like master's degrees in English from their university are not like there, there's a lot of misinformation as to what English really is. So they bring in English speakers because they know that we have a lot more experience with what people actually say. They only accept people from native English countries, usually. So like America, England, Scotland, Australia, sometimes New Zealand, uh, South Africa was recently like they, there are a lot more South Africans than there were apparently a few years ago. Sometimes the Philippines. I think in Japan, I've, I've, I've heard that there hmm. are some in the Philippines as well. Okay. Okay. Huh. All right. Well, that's really cool. Um, obviously, you know, my opinion on all this, this is pretty, pretty fucking cool that you get to go to a completely other country and you've obviously stuck with it. You've enjoyed it enough. So, and yeah. kind of made it a career. So that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I, the teaching is really fun. Kids are awesome, which is like the, last thing I thought I would be saying. I'll is that why you, you sent me a book to read about how a bunch of kids get murdered? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's I feel like there's a kid centric theme, but I'm confused as to your your motives. I just I'm, I'm empathetic towards kids, I guess. So so I, I can I can get into a book about not no. Nah. Um but <laughs> but you know I, they're relatable is all for me. Um, and that's probably why I really like teaching is because I feel like I can relate really well to the kids. And a lot of the time teachers are like, oh, my God, I can't believe this kid's sleeping in my class. And I'm like, dude, I'd be sleeping, too. I'm so like, I'm so tired. Yeah, <laughs> if they were forcing yeah. me to be here today, I'd be like throwing a temper tantrum, too. <laughs> <laughs> I could just imagine having you as a teacher. That's you're you're so oh, God, what's the word? Oh, tedious. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. No, it's it's perfect. I, I had a I had a teacher once who I think I, I obviously I haven't had you as a teacher, but I think you would make a good one because you don't spout bullshit. I spout like I had a, a bullshit. <laughs> well, you spout like ridiculous bullshit, but you don't you know, you don't believe like you know, if you do well in this class and you buckle down and you're going to, you can do anything you want to kids. It's no, 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 no. You're not going to sell them a dream that they can't, you know, that they can't actually accomplish. You're just going to tell them how it is. And I think that that's, that's really cool. I had a teacher kind of similar to that at college who I fell asleep in his class all the time. I, it was a Photoshop class. And one day I kind of half woke up as he was talking about layers and layer masks. And I, and He's like, the maximum number of masks you can have is, is two per layer. And I kind of woke up and I raised my hand. I'm like, do you differentiate between a vector mask and a raster mask or just two layers per mask? He's like, just two. I'm like, okay, cool. And I fell back asleep. That was a cool guy. Like, because he just didn't. He's like, okay, you got this, clearly. So I think you're that kind of teacher that's like, oh, man, take a nap. Take five. You'll get it. You'll get there eventually. Oh, man, but they're, they're always so tired here, too. Like, I think the average day, like, okay, let's let's look in the life of, like, I know for Korean students, I've only been in Japan for a few days, but the average life of a Korean student in like, let's say sixth grade, because I was probably closest with my sixth graders, okay. um, they get up, they go to school, uh, school starts, uh, what, like eight, no, 9 a.m., 8.30, maybe 9 a.m. Okay. Um, my first class was at 9 a.m. And then they get out of school, probably, what, like two and then most of them are in Hagwon or like a private academy until probably 9 or 10 p.m. at night. Um, I have a lot of kids that don't get home until like midnight, I guess. And then they just do their homework then. And then they get up Holy the next crap. night. And, rinse and, rinse. and mostly on the weekends, they have academies as well. Um, so like a lot of the time I feel kind of bad for them because they work harder than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like they're working. That's just 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 schoolwork. Uh, that's an eight-hour shift from nine to. Uh, it's like a six-hour shift, I guess, from nine to two, maybe five. But then it's you know 
till nine o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, that's 12 hours. If they don't get to bed by midnight, that's, that's an 18 hour day every single day. For some of them. Yes, it probably is. Oh my God. That geographical area is going to take over the world with that kind of, you know, regiment or like, burn out all their kids. I'm not sure. I heard somewhere that in Korea, the, the like percentage of kids that I think goes to college is like 97% right now. Holy it's shit. Something, it's something insane. Which is just like, it is like telling everybody your dreams are going to come true because clearly 97% of the population can't all be overachieved. But like, I, I'm i not sure. I'm not sure where that's going to lead and what direction. But it also means that they're all very competitive. And getting into a good high school is the most important thing. And I had a lot of like sixth graders especially who had, you know, like, how are you today? And they'd be like, ah, oh, stressed out or stressed. And I'd be like, why? Why are you stressed? And they're like, because entrance exams for middle school. And I'm like, I, I didn't even know there was such a thing. Like, I don't think I ever had one of those. N- no, no. You, the United States does not have entrance exams for middle school. You just go to middle school. And it's a waste of, it's a waste of fucking time, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's you ridiculous. Have years of your life. <laughs> I don't know if you know this because obviously you've only been teaching there for about a year, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But I don't know how, how long have they been doing this kind of schedule with their schooling? Like, is this a new thing or how many generations have had this crazy regimen? I don't think it can be that old. If only because I know in the 50s, Korea was going through extreme poverty. And then I think that from there, things started to build up. I know that I think around the 80s or the 90s was when they really started to flourish. Hmm. Yeah, but the older generation didn't have English the same way that this generation does. Okay. Okay. This generation, they take English from... In the school system, it starts in third grade and then goes uh, upwards. It used to be until the end of high school, although they're cutting back on a lot of the programs. So now sometimes it's only Eng- uh, elementary school that they have a native English teacher. But they do have English all the way through high school. <sighs> but the older generation doesn't really have much of that, I don't think. Because I'm, I'm wondering whether or not, because clearly they're, they're investing in, in the next generation. And that's, that's a good thing. I think it's, I wish it was something that the United States was doing better but the amount of pressure that they're putting on the students is you know i I wonder if oh it's amazing it's ridiculous and i wonder if we can't look back at at how this has already paid off and course correct but if this is the first generation that this has really happened to i mean if this has been happening since let's say 19 1990 then that's only uh, what 25 years ago so the if it started then, then that would just just be the first generation emerging from schools. That's not I mean, that's some data to go off of. But this is I mean, this could be fantastic. This could be I'm, I'm curious as to what some of the other issues, you know, could arise from from just stressing people out that much. Well, I know I know that the Epic program, the one that I was with a year ago, they have been around for almost, I think, like 20 years, maybe. I, I don't know about the course loads and things like that. I mean, like, in addition yeah. to the increased English, they've also had, like, like I mean, those those hagwons or academies that they go to are, are English, but also, like, math or science and things like that. They are studying all the time. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I'm pretty sure that Japan is the same way. I was, I was asking kind of, you know, well, when do the kids, when's the latest uh, private academies for the kids? And I think they were saying like nine or 10 PM is usually the latest. So I think, I think it's going to be about the same here as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's just, that's a long day for anybody. I've been so bored by the way. Oh my God. No. Oh man. Like just to deviate from that whole reading my book it's the the book has been uh, the book has been something but i could have finished it by now if i wanted to but it, it's it's to to segue from just massive course loads to to some asshole who's been off of work for a week and a half um that'd be me and i'm kind of suffering from some cabin fever here it's nice to finally be graduated which is great but it's it's between semesters there's no work so I'm gonna do some chores around home you know so I'm losing my mind. That's the lie. Oh, it is not. Do not lie to me. No, you're right. Keeping busy is the best thing, I think. Yeah. This is my first downtime I've really had. Well, my day off yesterday was my first downtime that I've had since I got here. 
since I stepped off the plane, you know. Right on, right on. Yeah. But now my back has been killing me and I don't know what's up with that and Oh Josh. Yeah, I don't know. I'm changing my pillows. It hasn't helped. I will see. Oh, all the eggs are orange here. All of them? Yeah, like just the yolk. Nothing crazy like the whole egg, but the yolk itself is like a different color. Huh. Yeah, I I only noticed it really for the first time uh, when I went to like make eggs the other day and I, I opened it and I was like, well, what is this? Why it's like it orange so instead of yellow. Is that right? Yeah. And I was I looked huh. it up and uh, my friend looked it up actually. Apparently it's orange because of there's something in the diet of the chicken, which can be like the kind of flour that it eats or maybe like a chemical thing. I'm that not makes sure. Sense. Okay. And it just changes so that yeah, yeah, in Japan their eggs are like notoriously orange. Huh. That's interesting. I thought for a minute you meant the eggshell was orange and I was like, I've seen brown ones, so that's not unusual, I suppose. They're mostly just brown here, I think as well. Ah. Did you know that the the orange bit, the uh the yolk is not the chicken. That the white part's the chicken, the orange part's the food for the chicken as they I, Yeah, I knew the orange part the was, the, was the food. Okay. Okay. But hopefully there's no chicken in there anywhere. <laughs> well, the white bit's the chicken. It's just still a liquid chicken. Oh, true. But it's but it's not fertilized, right? Like, so it wouldn't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that would, oh, you know, no, if fertilized, that's the part that becomes the chicken. But yeah, you're right. Although there is some culture, I think, that, that eat, like, nearly birthed chickens from eggs. It's it's like a week before they hatch, they, they cook them up, and there's, like, a really soft skeleton. Wherever that is... I'm not going there. <laughs> it's, I wouldn't eat it either. It's really, it's not, I'm not, well, I might try it, but I don't know. It's just a little, um, a little peculiar. Yeah. That sounds awful. Yeah. That sounds pretty bad. Have, but, but speaking of weird foods, have you seen any street vendors? Like, like I know some of the Asian markets sell some very odd fried, like scorpions and weird things like that. Is that something that you've seen around or is that just crazy talk? In Japan, I think you're usually pretty safe. I've been eating the tai, taiyaki. I might be butchering the name. It's like a fish that's filled with like usually some sort of delicious thing, like green okay. tea or like chocolate. Okay. And it's it's oh, wow. it's not a real fish. It's like a it's like a waffle fish that's filled with delicious. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. In Vietnam, there's snake's blood as a beverage. Yes, yes, as Ooh. a beverage. Taiwan had some interesting things. It was like a pancake, or no, it's like a um, like a rice bread thing, hmm. and they'd put ice cream on it, and then they'd put uh, like spices and like parsley as well, and then some peanut brittle stuff, like a peanut candy, and then they wrap it all up and give it to you, and it's like an ice cream burrito, and it's actually the most delicious thing I've ever had in my whole life, maybe, other than bong mi. Bong Mi from Vietnam, 50 cents, best sandwich of your life. That's awesome. And then there was the drink. What was the drink? I need to go find that at some Asian store. The the water, the beer water. You're going to get soju. Soju, soju. The stuff that, <laughs> what, is, what is it? It's 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 like 15, that. 20. It's I do happened. want that. I need to try that. You need to tell me exactly what brand, what brand of soju to go buy. There's. There's only soju. It's, I don't... That's the brand? I mean, okay, the, the orange cap is the best one. Everybody knows that. Oh, okay. Orange cap soju. <laughs> Got it. There's flavors. Like, there's, there's like, a pink cap that's, like, pomegranate, and I think there's, like, a blueberry one with a blue... Blue cap might be blueberry. I can't remember. But, yeah, the orange... Or it's, like, a yellowish cap, actually, and it's, like, mandarin or orange flavored, and it's okay. it's the best one. It's the least harsh of the soju flavors. And this is all just a, a pr soju is the brand of alcoholic garbage that I I believe so. Yes. Is that right? Okay. I'm gonna be honest with you. My hangul's not that good. I don't know what the bottle says. I don't think I ever tried to read it. I'm not surprised. You you go over there to teach English, not to learn. Korean. Yeah, not to be cultural. That would be. Yeah. No. No. Rough. That's not. That's not the point. <laughs> but yeah, I just they hand me the bottle. I drink it. Like okay, that's that was something. First thing, soju is not like beer. It's it's liquor. It's definitely liquor. It's not as high volume as like some things, but it's like it's not it's not something you can just casually drink a couple bottles of, which is a mistake that I've made before. 
it is maybe like a thousand three hundred won, so it's like maybe a dollar or so. And for a while, it was cheaper than the price of water in Korea, so they kind of had to raise the price, I guess, or something. That's the rumor that I've heard, just because it's, you know, like it's so easy to get drunk in Korea because there's a bottle of liquor that's cheaper than water, you know? If if the liquor is cheaper than water, then the water prices are too high. Lower the price <laughs> of the water, god damn it. People are thirsty, and they're drinking liquor to, to like, recover. Like, holy <laughs> shit. That might be the implication. Just the same thing here, but with soda. Yeah, the the raised price is like I think the thousand three hundred. I think it was cheaper before that. Water is water is still pretty cheap over there. It's just the liquor was so cheap because it's I I don't think it cost them anything to make it. I would say that there are just areas that like smell like soju. Like like if anybody ever parties, if anybody ever drinks, it's there's there's soju involved. My favorite, um, although the, the most popular would probably be like soju and beer together. So you mix it 50, which is not quite as harsh. And my favorite was soju and cider. And cider is just what they call like any sort of clear uh, soda beverage. So like they'd call Sprite cider. And I would huh. get like sojus and cider, which were probably the best. All right, I'm, see I'm seeing it here. I'll have to put it in the show notes. But we've got, let's see, we've got a couple different green caps of what I think is soju. Sold in green glass bottles. Does that yeah, sound right? Green. Okay, okay, good. I've got what looks like bamboo flavored, maybe? It sometimes has a bamboo s stick on the front of it. I don't think it's bamboo flavored. Okay, but the, but the orange cap you were describing, I see a reddish orange cap here that looks like grapefruit flavored. It's got a picture of a grapefruit on it. Can you send it to me? Yeah, of course I can. Yeah. Also, you reminded me of something. Because the bottles are green, the beach glass over there is all green, pretty much. Which is, I would just oh. be walking to the beach in the afternoons or whatever. All the beach glass that I would find would be green instead of being like our colors of brown. Huh. I don't think that that's it. Let me see. Soju orange cap. Orange cap is the best one. It's a. Uh... Apologies to our listeners, by the way, who have to hear us typing away on the keyboards. Yeah, it must be awful. They'll just they'll just have to deal with it, I suppose. We could just edit this one, right? I'm not gonna spend 500 hours editing out keyboard tapping. It'll just be atmosphere, I suppose. Okay, I think that there's another one. I think that no, this is uh not the right one. Here, I'll send you a link of. The orange cap soju, because it's the only one worth drinking. Like, when you'd find it, it wasn't very common in, like, the convenience stores. I think it was, like, kind of rare in some. So it would sort of be, like, an excuse to drink when you see the orange cap soju. It's like, oh, well, we've got a, you know, they've got orange cap. Well, now we have to buy it. They have it. Like, we can't get this anywhere. Yeah. I mean, you can, it's, nothing is really <laughs> available, but it, it's like... It was like mildly harder to find than the other yeah, cap, yeah. so we have to drink it. You have to. It's only 10 a.m. and I have a, a meeting with a potential employer, and then I've got jury duty later. But sure, let's but let's get it. drunk on some soju. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's perfect. Well, it, it, you know, if anybody here in the in the who's listening ends up trying some some orange cap soju because of this gleaming recommendation, then they'll have to they'll have to let us know what they thought of it. You should. It's Okay, that's not that's not a link. I'm that's sorry. That's not a link. Like, that's 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 I'm just oh, what mother. did you send? I'm sorry. I don't. <sighs> Thanks, Grandma. I can't. Like, it, there's a 404 every time I try to send it. I'm gonna have to hack the system. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Go ahead and find the link. Send it to me. Um, I'll let you know if I got it. But entertain our entertain our dear listeners for a minute. I'm going to refresh my drink because I am out, and that's just upsetting to me. I don't wanna. I don't wanna. What will I do? I'm the least entertaining person I know. Just talk about garbage, like you usually tell. Garbage. Um, let's talk about garbage. Okay, go ahead. I'm ready. In Korea, let's start with the garbage in Korea. There's a bunch of different garbage bins at my second apartment complex. There were probably like ten or eleven. There's one for like plastics. There's one for like food plastics. There was one for like bottles there was one for paper one for uh the paper actually i think that we just put in a big pile yeah like metals and things and then uh, clearly every, everything was separated and that was mandatory in a lot of asian countries there's mandatory recycling 
And in Korea, there was a big problem. Food waste. Food waste would have to go in like a little bin in your apartment complex, like usually on the ground floor. It's a very small waste bin. There would be a lid on it. And you'd always like dread opening the lid. Like you wouldn't want to touch the lid. And if you did, like, like it was usually covered in food. Like it was the grossest thing. And you had to put your food waste inside this little bin. And there would usually only be one for the apartment complex. And if you didn't, and if they caught you, you'd get fined, like, I think 200,000 yen or something. Or one. Sorry. So, like, $200. So, that was maybe the grossest thing ever. It was just that tiny little food bin. But Japan, it looks like, only has burnable and unburnable trash. So, it's significantly easier, I think, to to manage your way around. You can just put right. burnable. Okay. I only got back for the second half of whatever that was, but it sounded like it had to do with recycling food. You asked me to talk about garbage. Oh, for fuck's sake. You actually talked about garbage. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't okay. understand jokes, Josh. I don't understand anything that's not literal. I'm drinking milk tea. <laughs> what is milk? milk tea? Oh, my God. It says milk tea. Yeah, it's like uh, the English breakfast. A lot of um, Japan actually seems to have a lot more Western influence than Korea did. I think it's because before World War One, I, I want to say whenever whenever Japan and England sort of became pretty good friends, they were pretty chill. Japan really Westernized a lot. It was maybe a hundred, maybe two hundred years ago. I'm not really that familiar with Asian history. So Japan has like they they have milk tea because it's like. Uh, on the front of the label, it says, Afternoon tea has been drunk by the English ever since the custom was started by the Duchess of Bedford in the mid-19th century. So this is basically what it looks like when a in an English concept makes it to Asia. Oh. And then they try to sell it to the Asian market of, oh, here's this nifty thing that happens that's that's then not from over here. Oh, yeah. There's lots of, like, like, there's a lot of, like, Western places here that are advertised as, like, oh, done by... This culture, very American. We love it in America. It's this is what we would do here. <laughs> like I see, like there's a lot of like, I saw a bar that was called like, it was something like the Bootstrap, like something like it was like a ridiculous like cowboy themed bar, and it was like very America, and it was <laughs> it was very like. Uh, oh god. Like, okay. It's like I imagine that that's what Japanese people look at when they're just they're just like when they see me maybe they're like oh yeah she must be like a cowboy or something right like that's <laughs> that's what they're into how, I think. <laughs> how how accurate how accurate is some of these places that you've gone to is it is it like not far off just maybe a little bit too much? I mean I'm America? I'm a cowboy so Fuck. yeah right. of course they they got me. That's fantastic. I like that a lot. Yeah. So basically, you found the the American version of Asian Chow over here in 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 America. Yeah, definitely. Korea and Korea really really liked Paris and France. They were very into France. Every like every cafe was oh this is like a French cafe. This is very French. They have Paris Baguette, which is one of their most famous brands, which is a Korean brand, but it's you know everything. Of course, is, it is. is very you know. Like, oh, this is just like France. And Japan does seem to be more into England, I think, actually. But Tokyo is such a... It's such a melting pot of... of uh, Maybe cultures, but more of just stuff. Like, there's so many cool things here. There's so many cool stores. So you see stuff from every country here. Not as many Western people as, as, as you might expect there to be. Like, you might imagine that there's a lot of Westerners over here, and there's... There's more, for sure, than, like, way more than Busan. When I get on a subway, I'm not only, I'm not usually the only Westerner. Usually there's a couple other Westerners on the same subway. But it is still very Eastern, comparatively. Kind of lonely. Definitely, yeah. It's Mm. definitely Japan. Do you find there's a lot of, I suppose it's racism or like a, a sort of like distancing? Because I know they're very, I'm not articulating this well at all, but I know they're very like, very much, you know, Japan is for Japanese people. Everyone xenophobia. else is an outsider. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah, there, there is, there's definitely xenophobia. Actually, everybody's been extremely nice to me. In Korea, I think one of my co-teachers was kind of hostile, but here it seems like everybody is very, um... I haven't felt uncomfortable at all, but I've heard that a lot because there is, I think there's like maybe 3% foreigners here, maybe, maybe less. And 
Asian cultures tend to stick to themselves, even uh, at least in Korea and Japan. I know that there aren't a lot of other Asian countries, people from other Asian countries that come there. Southeast Asia, I think, is a little bit more open, but even then, I mean, everybody speaks different languages too, which probably makes it a little bit harder, right? Yeah, but I, I think that that's, I mean, I, I don't know that much, but I, I know there's other places that just aren't as xenophobic. Like, it's just Japan, for all its benefits, is mm. very known for being one of the most xenophobic nations, Yeah, I think. Especially considering their renown for, for all their anime and everything that ends up over here. <laughs> yeah. At least in Korea, it seemed like... <sighs> Like, they didn't really know as much about other cultures. So they were usually pretty interested in it. They thought that you were very interesting. Maybe I shouldn't articulate it. Or super offensive to... Or super offensive. Like, if... if but if it ends up very interesting, like, I I don't want to... If this does end up being in in what we what we release, I, I do want to understand that it is it is an observation, you know? Like, if, if it's not... I'm... To, to share like a, a, an interesting childhood experience of mine, I remember watching a lot of, of cops as a child, as a very young child, three, four or five years old. And I was in a pizza hut. This one guy came in and it, it was a black man. And I remember getting really quiet and I asked my parents, you know, in a, in a whisper, I was like, is that that's a bad guy, right? Oh, God. <laughs> I know. I know. And, the, and and of course, my very my very white Catholic parents were like, shut the f- up and then they had to explain to me and I, I was very curious I was just like what like on cops they're always arresting the ones with black skin I thought when you did enough bad things your skin would turn black oh, and then you could identify who the criminals were like that's just how that worked right that's some kids say the darndest thing shit right there exactly exactly so I just uh, total naivety uh, but once I explained no people are just born that way I'm like oh, okay cool can I have cheese crust like <laughs> I didn't give a fuck. I just moved right on. I miss so, pizza. I want some pizza. Uh, maybe you can... Maybe, do they deliver over there? I don't know. Do they have a pizza hut? So so to fetch back after pizza school, what was the super racist thing you were going to tell me about after my sharing of the black crime people? There is a lot of racism, although a lot of the time it's it's not like hatred. At least in Korea, there was hatred towards Southeast Asians. There was hatred towards Chinese people. Oh, they make the, you know, they, they pollute the air. They're the reason why it's so polluted here. There's there's a lot of like, oh, we don't like Japanese people too. That was pretty hmm. prominent. But as for cultures like ours, like Westerners, like towards either black people or white people, there was more curiosity. And then like they'd say racist things, but they wouldn't mean anything by it. You know, they had no they had no concept for what that meant. Okay. I know a lot of them would drop the N word very casually, and they didn't realize that that's not something that you can, you know, like they that, that that's maybe gonna right right <laughs> right. They said it like they just don't understand, but they're still curious. I I knew somebody who told me because they were African American when they maybe like African British actually I think, but they had like a, a kid try to like rub their skin. Like you were saying about how you didn't know why black people were black. Like, they like just... you tried to rub the, the dirt off yeah, almost? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Because I don't think they'd ever seen a black person before. Oh, my God. And and like with, with, with white people, they're usually like, oh, you, you guys don't like spicy food. You guys, <laughs> yeah, you, white people can't eat spicy food. Do you like, do you like, do you like kimchi? Oh, that's so crazy if you like kimchi because kimchi's, you know, white people don't like kimchi. And, oh, white people are like this, white people are like that. And it's like they just, but they're very curious about it. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're from a Western country. You must be so edgy and wild. And, and I think uh, actually in Japan, a weird example of that was, um, although this guy was very strange, I was at a hostel. And I had a Japanese guy who was like harassing me at a hostel. But pretty much he, he asked me if he could kiss me or if I was going to kiss him. And I said, uh, no, that's okay. And it was like, maybe, you know, I was trying to sleep or something. It was very strange. And then he's like, oh, but I thought, you know, you're Western. So maybe, you know, because you're a Western girl, you would. And I was like, no, no, it's not. I don't know. Maybe he's had luck before. Huh. That's interesting. They think that we're more wild and open-minded. Although I guess probably the sort of people that travel to Asia are sometimes like that. So I, I don't know. 
I don't know. I wonder if that's like a, a, a social perception or if that ends up being the people who do travel there end up like creating a sort of false statistic. I, I actually I downloaded a Tinder <laughs> the other oh. week. Oh, my friend had actually been using it before. And he said that it's a great way to meet people, you know, because you don't really know a lot of people around here. And I know a lot of people, a lot of my friends actually use it. And um, I downloaded it and I started like playing with it. Unfortunately, in Japan, the only people that you get are either people who don't really speak much English, which is just, I get so stressed out having long conversations with people who are try who are Japanese and trying to, or, you know, Korean and trying to learn English who don't have much experience because it's just yeah. constantly like they don't understand you have to repeat yourself. And I just, I already get stressed out by talking to people anyways. So it's like, yeah. Do you feel like you're almost insulting them by having them repeat themselves five times? Is that, cause I get that sense when I'm talking to somebody who doesn't have a firm grasp of English. Yeah. And it's also just really, I, I don't know. It's stressful for me. And I, I wouldn't want to date somebody who I couldn't have very in-depth conversations with. The Tinder is just full of people who don't, have a great grasp on English and then also Westerners who write in their blog or in their little profile space they write like I love traveling world traveler I love to travel and that's sort of like that sort of person usually just like rubs me they're all like uh, I don't know it's weird like I feel like there is a certain type of person who probably comes to Asia right 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 something that might help you just discussion wise with other people I know there's apps I think there might be a texting app too that that basically translates as you text. Um, I'm sure you must have run into these. Does no. that not help with 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 talking to people? Because I know that we had a guy in the uh, the kitchen at where I work who is um, Muslims the religion, but but that area of the world, and and he doesn't speak very good English at all. And he's a great guy, and we love him to death. But I, I know that that the the old kitchen manager used to talk to him using a phone app to translate like a live translation app and that that ended up you know just enabling them to have an actual conversation about general things maybe not ultra specific philosophy stuff but at least have a conversation that was more productive than thank you and you're welcome i haven't looked into that and i actually think i will now i don't know if i'm gonna get internet for when i'm out and about this year i might be saving money who knows mm. but yeah i i didn't use anything like that when i was in korea google translate i would sometimes try <laughs> It's really bad there. It's like not even <laughs> like if you type something in Korean into Google Translate, it comes out just complete gibberish. Like it sounds like a crazy person. Like it doesn't. There's no good translation at all. Damn. I, I don't I don't know. I feel like Google might be one of the best. I'm not sure if there's other places that are better. It's it's better for languages that are more closely. If it was like French to English or something, I'm sure it would be very easy to understand probably it seems like for that side of the world and maybe japan is a little bit better because there's a lot more japanese business there's a lot more like japanese communication between english to japanese than there is with korean with korean there's no good google translate i don't know if there's just nobody contributing to that or what but it's, it's awful i mean honestly i would stick to just very simple set well, like one subject sentences you know very simple stuff you know that might help in just general conversation if they're not getting it but that's you know but yeah if you end up trying that let me know because that, that would be interesting i'd be curious to see how that worked in the field i think i will it's not a bad idea you know my roommates have gotten a dog a puppy mm -hmm. who is super cute but it's a puppy i saw it right but just to describe to the listener too i love her on the condition that she gets her shit together eventually like, if she were to be the same dog for the rest of her life, I would not be able to handle that. Please, dear God, grow up and become an adult dog and just don't puppy too much anymore. Yeah, she seemed pretty rough. That was cute. Yeah. You know, with that in mind, like, I used to be on the fence for having children. And now I'm like, oh, dear God, can I just adopt an 18-year-old and then have them be successful? That would be ideal. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Just skip all the years. Yeah, and it's funny, actually. Being around children a lot makes the concept not seem that challenging for me. But I have never changed a diaper, so don't, like, like maybe that's where uh, where it actually changed. Like, when you have something that pees on everything, I've never had that. Like the dog. Yeah, like the dog. So that could be, like, you've, you've realized the worst part of parenthood, whereas I've gotten to experience the best one, which is playing with kids and teaching them new things. And then they go home. Yeah. somewhere else not yeah. with you somewhere else I that do is love by that far part. the best part 
So I love children. I think they're nice. I think they're messy. Let's see how they do when they're older. Yeah. I don't think I'll be the best father. I think I'll be that father that just says, I love you, but I'd love you more if you weren't such a piece of shit. You think you're going to have kids? I don't know. I think that's really dependent on whether or not I end up with somebody for more than eight months. Nice. So far is a big maybe. <laughs> so I'm not really sure. You know, that's a pretty long term commitment. And I think I think maybe let's let's get the, the dating thing down. Let's get the long term relationship thing down first and then move from there. Yeah. At least I have my finances figured out. I feel pretty good about that. So, you do. You are a scheduler. Oh, no. Uh, I've just recently become a scheduler, which, by the way, to talk on that for a minute. No, no, no. Wait, wait, what were you going to say? You've been doing lists and stuff since a few years ago, at least a year or so ago. It was before I left, you were making some pretty good, like, like you were putting in uh, alerts for things. You were being very meticulous about your, your working and your eating, too. You were recording everything you were eating, I think, for a while there. You're right. That has not been consistent. Mm. I, I, I was calorie counting pretty hardcore there for a bit, and then I stopped, and then I started, then I stopped. With lists, I always wanted to be organized, and I always struggled with it. And so I tried a couple different systems. I finally ended up on one recently that I really, really like. They're not paying me for this or anything, but I'll go ahead and shout out to them. Uh, Todoist is a pretty cool app. I think if you're trying to figure out a way to organize your life, you need to try a bunch of different kinds of systems until you figure out what works. I think trying one thing and then having it fail doesn't mean you should stop. Todoist is one of the ones that makes sense to me because I can put everything in that program about my life and organize it into an actionable thing. And lately that has really, really been helping me get a lot of chores done and a lot of different tasks that normally would just not happen. Like one of the most recent that I can think of that's extremely important. I graduated and I put in there that I had to send thank you cards to some family members who had sent me graduation gifts. That is not something I usually would have gotten done as quickly as I did, but I did it the same day that I got the cards. I don't think I've ever sent a thank you card. So exactly. Me either. I mean, this is this is the kind of thing that if your brain is set up that way, you can put in the app what you need to do and any details regarding what you need to do. And then later you can just do it. For someone who struggles with that kind of thing, that's that's pretty cool. But again, I'm not getting paid for this, so I will <laughs> shut the f up about it because I will I will talk endlessly about this garbage because I am so excited that I finally have a handle on a lot of really stupid little things that matter a lot. To do list is what it's called. To do ist. To do ist. I'll go ahead and put it in the uh, the show notes for people who are interested. There's a bunch of different apps out there. OmniFocus is one that I know is very very good. That's more Apple exclusive. I know it's for OS X and iPhone, mm -hmm. but To Doist is one of the ones that's for all the platforms, and that I think is a little bit better for people who who may not be Apple only. You know, again, I think that's for someone who has a very particular kind of way of thinking. I'm a very all or nothing person, which I think you've noticed. Yeah. For me, that works out really, really well. This does feel like a very long advertisement for them. So I'm going to stop now. I'm just going to say <laughs> to do it if you're if yeah, if you're interested in future advertisements, give me a call. I'm currently in a guest room, um, which doesn't have a locking door, which is probably the <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's just somebody's like like it's their spare room are you in a house or an apartment complex it's a cafe oh okay it's it's a divers and bikers cafe which is an interesting combination uh, it's a couple who um i guess likes motorcycles and scuba diving they've been saying that they can get me scuba certified and offered me a discount although Maybe, maybe. I've been looking up the other prices and seeing if I want to do that. This is an Asian couple, of course? Yeah, yeah, Japanese. That's that's so weird that when you said it, I thought, Asians can't be bikers. <laughs> These have to be American motorcyclists, <laughs> right? I'm, I don't understand. No, they've got like Harley Davidsons. Oh my god, Harley Davidsons? Yeah, yeah. So this is the guest room, and then there's, there's another... Like, there's a main room, and actually, I think only their son is living here right now, but the couple owns it. And there's, like, a big kitchen that has, like, a bar where you can buy shots, and then there's, like, a little cafe area that is, like, it's, like, open windows, motorcycles inside. Yeah, it's 
It's interesting. Wow, that's very different. So this is temporary? This is something you're just staying at for now while you wait to get into the official housing? Yes, yes. Um, I just, I booked it at an Airbnb site. After a month, I'm going to hopefully have an apartment to move into. Yesterday was my first day off and yesterday was Sunday, so everything's kind of closed on Sunday. I think I'm going to ask either my friend who can speak some Japanese or maybe um, maybe my boss said that he would be willing to help me. So I might ask one of them to help me find an apartment or figure out what I'm supposed to do to get it because I really don't know. Actually, one of one of my coworkers who's much more senior to me and is he seems to really have a good handle on things. I think he was actually going to tell me some good places. But that place is good for now. For now it's 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 good. No locking door, but no one's like broken in. <laughs> Yeah, so far, so good. <laughs> I'm a very, like, private person. I like to have my own space. I, I like being by myself a lot, usually. <laughs> I don't like not having a locking door. That makes me very uncomfortable. Even though I know that, like, like social etiquette is no one would ever come in, but it's just it's weird. It's weird. I don't like it. Is there any way for you to get some, you know, some, some very simple method to just kind of lock the door? Or, or are they... Like, obviously, they they wouldn't really be opposed to that, right? I mean, you take a look at this thing. There's just a handle on it. I mean, you, like, yeah, it opens out. But I can't, I can't like, put something on it. Right, but that handle, I, I bet you anything, you could screw something into the wall around the side and then hook it to the handle. I don't think they'd like me screwing stuff into their walls. Well, most apartment complexes will let you hang things. They'll let you nail into the wall at least. But this is somebody's house. It's a guest room. It's like somebody's renting out a room. It's not like you get your own apart. Like, like okay, when I got here, I came with my friend. He picks me up at the airport because he's maybe the nicest guy on earth. We get here and the guy who owns it sees that I've brought a guy over and he's like, who's he? And I'm just like, oh, it's just my friend who's helping me move. He's like, he doesn't stay here. He doesn't sleep in here with you. And I'm just like, well, he's not gonna. But he didn't like believe us for like ten minutes. He could be like, <laughs> like he's not, he's not coming in there. Like, and I'm like, I, I'm not gonna like. He's, I'm not sleeping with him. They're not. 